Today on Experts Showcase, Dr. Jill Pallier talking about low back pain, three things you need to know. Dr. Jill, welcome to uh, Expert Showcase. We're so glad to have you as today's expert guest. How are you doing today? Good, Mark. Thanks. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. So just to give the audience a quick uh, place to focus, give me a quick overview of pretty much what we're going to focus on in today's episode. Well, low back pain, as you know, is uh, literally painful. <laughs> and it creates discomfort. It limits activities and it generates anxiety for people. So accidents can happen, but awareness of the way you move is key. In fact, a recent study of a thousand low back pain sufferers um, showed that being distracted during an activity uh, increased the incidence of low back pain by about 25 times. Wow. Yeah, so it's important to um, you know, be focused and aware of the way you move. So we're going to talk about how to reduce back pain now and then how to reduce it from recurring in the future. Excellent. And so just to give people a quick uh, sense, you know, we usually try to break things down into three key takeaways. So we're going to talk about maintaining a neutral spine. You're going to teach me a little bit about that. We're going to talk about stabilizing the spine and then getting adjusted. So these sound like pretty important things to understand, especially if I have some kind of low back pain I'm dealing with. So Jill, let's take those in order. Um, maintaining a neutral spine, what's that about? Uh, what do I need to know if I'm trying to take care of my back a little bit better? Right. Uh, well, neutral spine is a position of minimal tissue stress. So when you bend forward or move, um, the, the back muscles have to counteract gravity that pulls your spine, the vertebrae, and the discs forward. So when the back is flexed or curved, that puts the low back muscles in a mechanical disadvantage. And I have a prop for you, so let me okay. just demonstrate here. <laughs> we have a spine. <laughs> yes, a spine here. Okay, let me see if I can get it right here. So a neutral spine is maintaining that natural low the curve, curve, curve right. in the lower back. So when you bend forward or flex, mm -hmm. the back starts to round. Okay, and then that can create a uh, increase your chance of hurting your back, or if you do that repetitively, it can create uh, the, increase the chance of herniating a disc. Um, it's actually the most common way to herniate a disc is repetitive flexion, especially if you're going to your end range or if you're carrying a load. Mm -hmm. So you want to maintain a neutral spine whenever you're doing a task, whether it's doing squats at the gym or picking up your toddler um, or pushing a vacuum, you want to try and maintain a neutral spine. Now let me be totally selfish here, Jill, and take advantage uh, of our time together here and say, what about a person like me who spends way too much time sitting in a chair, uh, sitting in front of a computer, uh, you know, I do have some bad habits, especially if I'm working on, you know, some video editing or something, I'll, I'll start to kind of, you know, curl over a little bit here. I mean, what, what, what am I doing to my spine? <laughs> and and wh where am I? Any, I'm probably nowhere close to neutral spine when I'm doing that, am I? Right, right. Well, when you currently, if you have back pain currently, you want to minimize the offending posture, which is usually flexion, bending, mm -hmm. sitting. So uh, you want to minimize that sitting by getting up periodically. Okay. If you're at your desk, watching TV, um, whatever it is, you want to stand up, reach overhead, extend backwards. Okay, yeah, it's so go, go, you know, go back in the opposite direction and kind of get things back exactly. where, they, where they should be. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, it's good to take micro breaks from sitting. Um, 20 minutes is ideal, but you know, mm -hmm. at least try and take them periodically so that you can kind of counteract the effects of sitting all the time. So every time I get up and go to the refrigerator, it's a good thing. I'm, I'm taking care of my spine. <laughs> I may not be taking care of my gut, but I'm taking care of my spine. Excellent. Right, okay. So right. maintain a neutral spine is obviously really important. So you also then said that you know working on stabilizing the spine is a really important thing. So tell me about that. What do I do to stabilize my, my spine, uh, especially if I have any kind of low back pain that I'm dealing with? Well, you would stabilize the spine by engaging your brace. 
And what that really means is a light contraction, about 10% of the abdominal muscles, and yeah. even the low back muscles. So the, it's tightening everything up a little, not like super clenching 10% of just kind of tightening up the muscles a little bit, is that right? Right. You're not sucking in the gut as hard as you can, but you're creating a stiffness. Mm -hmm. Like when you cough, like <clears throat> cough, you create that stiffness. Or like if I was going to come and punch you in the stomach, Mark, you'd tense up a little bit. <laughs> yes, I would. <laughs> Please don't do that. <laughs> yeah. So you, you tense it up a little bit, and then you try and maintain that, that stiffness through the duration of a task. Again, if you're doing squats in the gym, picking up your toddler, or pushing a vacuum. So that's shown to be protective of the spine, maintaining that brace. Okay. And you also hear that a lot in you know exercise uh, classes. They'll say engage your core or, or stiff or you know engage your brace, and that's what that really means is to create that little bit of a stiffness. And when I'm doing that, Jill, is, is that literally actually strengthening the muscles that when I'm doing that is it like a mini workout, or how does that help? Or is it I'm only stabilizing it while I'm kind of clenching it a little bit there? Well, it, it it can strengthen it a little bit, but you're also ingraining the pattern. Okay. So remember what I said earlier about being distracted during the activity. If you practice that brace and that neutral spine together, then you're less likely to lose your form and forget your form. You know, okay. if something does distract you, it becomes more automatic. Excellent. Okay, so it becomes kind of a, an automatic habit then, a healthy habit essentially of, of how I'm holding myself. Right, right. So... Cool. Uh, they did a study where they had a cadaver spine with no muscles or ligaments, and they found that it collapsed after uh, with a load of 20 pounds. Mm. So you really see the difference that makes if you engage the muscles. I guess the cadaver can engage its muscles very much. Right, right. <laughs> I've been accused of being a cadaver once in a while, but I guess it's not a good excuse for me. I, I'm able to at least do a 10% uh, you know, engagement there, so I probably should be doing that more often. Right, right. So then let's talk about your third point then, so getting, getting adjusted. I, I, I'm guessing you don't mean my kind as a psychologist of you know, getting your head adjusted. You're talking about the spine, so tell me about that. That's right. Well, a lot of times when you have uh, back pain or there's some kind of dysfunction, you have loss of, of mobility in the spine or there's some type of altered biomechanics. And this altered biomechanics can create dysfunction in uh, various structures of the spine, the bone, the ligaments, the discs, and even parts of the nerve. And, and that's partly why uh, bed rest is no longer recommended for back pain because you're not moving and right. your joints can become hypermobile. So the way the adjustment addresses this is kind of twofold. Uh, first, let's talk about nerve receptors. You have mechanoreceptors, which are nerve receptors that sense motion and movement and where your body is in space. Then you also have nociceptors, which are nerve receptors that sense harmful stimuli. Mm. And these stimuli can be perceived as pain when they reach certain parts of the brain. Okay. Now, the nociceptors can be stimulated even when you're not having pain. Okay. And that's sometimes why when you pick up that pencil, you know, it's not heavy, but then all of a sudden you have pain afterwards. It's not necessarily that pencil, but there was something going on prior to, and that just pushed you over the threshold. Okay. So um, the mechanoreceptors that sense the motion can function to inhibit the nociceptors. Interesting. So okay. Yeah, so if they're working properly they can actually reduce your perception of pain. And the reverse is true. So if you have a hypomobile joint or the bio biomechanics are not functioning properly, they're altered, then your mechanoreceptors aren't firing quite properly. Mm -hmm. And that can diminish their function and actually increase your perception of pain a little bit. Wow, that's really interesting. So yeah, I'm I, yeah. completely unaware of that whole sort of mechanism there. So by, by engaging one set of, of nerves and sens sensation, I'm actually blocking out one that might be getting almost like too loud if, it, if the other one isn't there. I mean, this, I mean my, my pain sense is actually yeah, getting too sensitive, probably, right? Probably a good analogy. And yeah. then what the adjustment does 
is it addresses the hypermobility by increasing the, the range of motion mm -hmm. and then helping to facilitate the biomechanics. And then that, in turn, stimulates the mechanoreceptors, uh, which can inhibit the nociceptors. And that can help reduce the pain right now. Uh, the adjustment can affect your nervous system in a way that you might not be able to yourself. Mm -hmm. And so that can help your pain right now. And then secondly, uh, be, because hypermobility and ultra biomechanics can um, accelerate degeneration and arthritis and things like that, by getting the adjustment, you may be reducing your chances of these things in the future. Excellent. And obviously, to state the obvious, I'm, I'm assuming, the getting adjusted part is literally what I come to you for. That This is literally the chiropractic adjustment that we're talking about. It's, it's not something I'm doing myself. It's an intervention that I'm coming to you for professionally, right? Right. It's a hands-on treatment where we just induce a little motion into the joint. And it's usually, you know, pretty painless. <laughs> <laughs> Every now and then there's a snap, crackle, pop, right? But it's, uh, it's actually usually a relief, not, not, a, not a painful experience at all. <laughs> sure. Sure. Yes. Excellent. Well, this has been great. I have actually learned a ton here uh, just now, Jill. So, I mean, I've, I'm very glad we, we did this episode. And uh, so if you're out there and you've got low back pain or you're just looking to actually keep your back healthier, we've been talking with Dr. Jill Pallier, who is a chiropractor. And we've been talking about low back pain, three things you need to know. And just to recap those three things, we've been talking about maintaining a neutral spine. We've been talking about stabilizing the spine and then the actual adjustments that you get by working with a chiropractor like Dr. Jill. So Jill, I want to tell people how they can get in touch with you since uh, I know that I found this helpful and it's actually helped me understand chiropractic a whole lot better. So if you want to get in touch with Dr. Jill, you want to give her a call at her office. Her office number is 484-840-9100. So again, 484-840-9100. But the other way that might be even easier to remember is to visit uh, Dr. Jill's website, and that is drjillchiropractic.com. So we'll put that up on screen for people so they can see it. Jill, it's been great having you on Expert Showcase. Um, thanks, thanks for being here. Thank you very much, Mark. That was a great summary. And another great Expert Showcase episode. Chris, what should people do right now? Yeah, if you're watching this and you're a coach or consultant, imagine what it would do for you and your business if you were a guest on Experts Showcase. And here's the best part. Other than, other than possibly increasing your business, an appearance on Experts Showcase is free. We give you a copy of your episode so you can use as marketing collateral. And we give you a, a coaching session to go along with it to, to tell you how you can best market your episode and other tips and tricks about your, your business. So what you want to do is head on over to expertshowcase.com, click on the big yellow apply button, and apply to be our next featured guest on the Expert Showcase. Now if you're a coach or consultant and you've already imagined what having your own internet talk show will do for you, then we want you to head to videocontent.agency and check us out, check our packages out, and get in contact with us. Let's see if we're a good fit, and let's see if we're the ones to produce you and make you the next star and have your own internet talk show. And until next time, uh, Mark, anything else? I couldn't have said it any better, so uh, just do what he said.